Just this last weekend, Le Mans happened in France. And it was notable because it was the 24-hour Le Mans 100th running, and it was the first time Ferrari's raced there in almost 50 years. And another notable thing happened at this Le Mans, and that was a NASCAR was entered. And while that just sounds absolutely ridiculous to pretty much anyone that knows the sport of racing, it's actually happened before, and in the 70s, there were a few NASCARs, I think it was a Ford, and then maybe a Sh Dodge, I think, that were entered, and I don't know if they either of them finished, but it was kind of cool to see that back in the day. And now, fast forward about 50 years, we've got another NASCAR entered, and this was a Chevy Camaro. They modified it a little bit so it could like go around right turns and have like headlights and stuff, and just a little bit more downforce and probably braking as well. And I'm pretty sure that it finished. I'm not positive. I'll have to read up on it. But pretty sure that it finished. And it just looked absolutely insane with all the LMP hypercars or whatever and the GT3 cars. And it was a little bit almost like that uh, video I think I saw a while back of like Yao Ming walking around. And he was just like three feet taller than everyone else. And I could show you guys a video of this car compared to all the rest of the uh, little cars, but I think that maybe it'll be best if I just make my own version of that video for comedic relief, but also to further drive home the point of how different this is from all the other LMP cars. And if that brilliant stop motion video tickled your fancy with its impeccable voice acting and wonderful editing, please consider liking and subscribing. But also, I've read up a little bit more on the NASCAR at Le Mans uh, since I recorded the first part of this video yesterday. And turns out that it finished 39th out of 62 competitors, which is pretty good for basically a Chevy Camaro. And a Chevy Camaro that wasn't designed to do anything other than turn left and it was driven by three very prestigious race car drivers which is quite cool to see it was driven by jimmy johnson who's an absolute legend in nascar uh, mike rockefeller who i've never heard of but he's won le mans and jensen button who's a formula one legend in his own right and this is kind of a cool thing for le mans and motorsports just in general and the kind of crossover that can happen at these sort of endurance races and it might be cool in the future to see other stuff like this like i know that this was like 10 years in the past but there was before glickenhaus was like a actual manufacturer jim glickenhaus campaigned basically a coach built car which I forget what it was called, but I think it was like designed after the Ferrari P3, and he had a road legal version, but then they did another more track version. And that's kind of a cool one-off, hey, let's drive this at an endurance race. And maybe it'd be cool in the future to see like some time attack cars or hill climb cars compete if the rules allow, even if they're not going to be necessarily competitive. It'd still be cool to see them run against the actual race cars even though they're still race cars, but y you know what I mean. And I don't know, it's an interesting time for motorsports, and it was just kind of cool to see this and make a video on it.